Hi, this is Magda with Utopia Health Career Center. And I am here because I want to talk a little bit about um, the dialysis treatment and who do we offer the dialysis treatment to. And I usually talk about dialysis itself and what it is, but this time I want to talk about the patient who receives the dialysis treatment. So there are different types of dialysis which I'm not going to talk about here. I am going to concentrate on the stages of chronic kidney disease because the people whose kidneys are not working any longer, those are the ones that receive dialysis or some type of treatment could be um, a transplant for example or dialysis so basically I wanted to go over the stages and I'm just gonna go ahead and move my camera closer so that we can see my um, my board here so let's say people that have no no problem with the kidneys should have estimating right should have a kidney function of about a hundred percent. Let's say we're good, we have a hundred percent, right? So a hundred percent, okay? So a hundred percent means we're good, no, no type of um, kidney failure or problem whatsoever. Hi, Miguelito, how are you? So people, when the chronic kidney disease starts, we start, we have five stages and we start with stage one. In stage one, there could be no symptoms. So we have a lot, a lot of people walking around with stage one, hi Kayla, with stage one renal disease. And they don't know it until they probably get a blood test maybe, or they get a sonogram and they see the doctor can identify that there's something wrong with the kidney in terms of anatomy. But the person has a very normal life and um, there's really not a lot of symptoms. So then we move on to stage two. In stage two, the person could have some symptoms. Uh, you can see one of the first symptoms that arises is anemia because the kidney has a very, very, very um, um, uh, important part in red blood cells creation. So the person could have anemia. Okay, so that's what you will see in stage two. You could see a little bit of anemia. You could see high blood pressure, for example, those type of things. And then stage three, now stage three is divided in, in two. This is the most recent um, categories. Stage three is stage uh, 3A and stage 3B. So what they did is that they, if the person is starting in stage three, they're considered um, sta uh, A, stage 3A. And this goes by something that is called the GFR. I don't want to I don't want to get into a lot of technicalities uh, because I don't want to start confusing everyone. I just wanted to stay like very um, at the surface level and explain that there are five stages of kidney disease. So in stage three, now is divided stage A and stage B, and most of the patients that have, or people in the United States that have chronic kidney disease are in stage 3A, most of the people, okay? And many times when it's diagnosed, when chronic kidney disease is diagnosed, the person is already in stage 3, okay? So then we have stage 4. Stage 4 is important because at this stage is when the person, now it's considered a patient, is starts to starts to try to accept this idea that they're gonna need some type of treatment in order to be to live. Because when we move on to stage five, this is called end stage renal disease. This does not mean that the person will die tomorrow. That's not what it is. It's just the last stage of these five stages. So in end-stage renal disease, the person needs some type of treatment. They either need dialysis or they need a transplant in order to live. So 
many patients receive transplants even before receiving dialysis. They don't have to go through dialysis to receive a transplant. If they actually have somebody that will donate this uh, kidney for them. Now, if the person wants a transplant, a kidney transplant, but they don't have anybody that is going to donate a kidney to them, then most likely they will have to start on dialysis and wait. They will have to go on a list. And this is called the transplant, the kidney transplant list. And they may be waiting. The wait list, the wait is right now is maybe two to three years. So that this means that this patient has to be on some type of dialysis for two to three years. Okay. So in terms of dialysis, there are two different dialysis. There is peritoneal dialysis and then hemodialysis. And hemodialysis is what um, we focus on here during our training. We train staff members to be able to uh, learn about the dialysis, learn about kidney failure, learn about everything renal, and qualify, you know, prepare these, these um, students to be qualified candidates at the dialysis clinic. Now, it's super important that anyone that's considering um, dialysis as a career, it's super important that this person understands that you shouldn't choose dialysis because you want a better pay. That shouldn't be the reason, because if that's the only reason, then you will not like it. You will hate it. You will hate it. The person that goes into dialysis as a career has to be a person that understands the chronic kidney failure community. A person that understands, that can understand that there is a lot of depression within this community and a person that is going to be there to give their best and to help these patients live as fully as they can. So basically, this is what I wanted. It's a short video. All I wanted to show is that there are five stages, okay? In other videos, I'll just go deep and I'll explain a little bit more, but there are five stages. And when we start treatment is on stage five. We have to start dialysis or the person has to receive a kidney transplant. And as I said, many people walk around in stage one and they don't know it. How can you know it? How can you know it? Just ask your doctor for a GFR percentage rate, a GFR percentage rate. Do that test and that will give you an idea. There are other testings that are done, but that at least will give you an idea um, to make sure that uh, you're okay, that your kidneys are okay. And in most recent statistics, unfortunately, the CDC says that one out of seven U.S. adults have chronic kidney disease. One out of seven. And that is going, going to be um, the prevalence. So that is going to be the projection, one out of seven. And I read in other studies that one out of five for 2025, one out of five adults um, in the U.S. will have a diagnosis of chronic kidney disease, which it's very scary. Those numbers are really scary. So, um, and another, and, and the other hand, we also have per year 750,000 people on stage five ESRD. So that means that they either received a transplant or they will receive a transplant or they receive dialysis. So basically, that is what I wanted to cover here. I wanted to let you guys know who the dialysis treatment is for because we talk a lot about dialysis here in this, um, in this page, but uh, maybe a lot of you don't know who, who, what type of patients receive dialysis. So it's basically for people that um, their kidneys are not working uh, correctly and that they are already on stage five. So if we start out with a function of 100%, people that are on stage five have less than 15%. People that are on this stage has less than 
15 15% of kidney function, okay? And that's when we start dialysis or the patient receives the transplant. So I hope uh, you enjoyed it, and that is it for today. I'll be here a little bit more often, and I will continue to talk about chronic kidney disease, and we will continue to talk about us as um, the providers and as the caregivers and as the staff members of the dialysis clinics. And, um, and I will continue to encourage all of you that are working already on dialysis to try to give the best of you and to try to help these patients to live as fully as they can. Okay, so thank you for being here and bye. Thank you for watching.